we can happen to grow a tree so large that it has so many number of leaves as there are number of observations and we get our perfect in sample fit. So our sum of squared residuals is exactly zero. But we are likely overfitting and it is bad for predicting out of sample. Even if we put some kind of stopping criteria, how do we know that we are not overfitting? In this case, what we want to do is to prune the tree by penalizing complexity. So the strategy is, we first grow a very large tree, then we find a subtree of our large tree that minimizes the new objective function, where the new objective function is the old objective function, which is the sum of squared residuals that we wanted to minimize, plus a penalty alpha times the number of final nodes, meaning the, the number of terminal nodes. So this looks very much like penalized OLS, meaning like lasso or reach, but now we do it for our regression tree. So what happens if we put alpha equal to zero? It means that we do not penalize the complexity and we do not prune our tree. We keep our tree as large as we grow it in the first place. Now what happens if we put alpha to be very large? When we penalize the complexity a lot, sometimes it happens that we end up with chopping the tree just to one node, like really not having any branches. And we deal with choosing what it would be the optimal alpha through cross-validation, the same way as we did it through lasso and reach. We choose which alpha gives us the lowest error in the validation set. So to sum up, we first use recursive splitting to grow a large tree. Then we create a grid of alpha and apply cost complexity pruning for each value of alpha. For each value of alpha, we get our optimal subtree. And then we use k-fold cross-validation to find optimal alpha. And we ask to return the subtree that corresponds to the optimal alpha. And we use this pruned subtree to predict for new observations. So far we've been trying to predict a continuous variable, but what if we want to predict a class? We need to use classification trees. And what is different for classification in comparison to a regression tree? So as it appears, you do exactly the same except for the way you form prediction. You do not use the mean, but you use the most commonly occurring class within a leaf. For splitting rule, you also use a different rule. You are not minimizing the sum of squared residuals. You are minimizing classification error or Gini index or entropy. Gini index and entropy are very much numerically similar and they are more sensitive for the node purity than classification error. So in our tutorial, we will be using Gini index to grow our big, big tree and then we'll use classification error for pruning. So let's define the proportion of class K observations in old M as p hat M K, where N M would be the number of observations in old M. And we simply try to sum the number of observations that belong to class K, where I are all the observations that fall into region M. So if we return back to the Titanic data example, we have six partitions in this example. And for example, we want to measure the proportion of class survived observations in node one. In node one, we have 14 observations and three of them have survived. So the proportion of survived people in region one would be three over 14. And similarly, we can find the share that died in this node, it's 11 over 14. So misclassification error is the proportion of observations in node M, which do not belong to the majority class. In our example, misclassification error would be 3 over 14, because we will classify everyone who falls into this region as not survived or died, and only 3 out of 14 we misclassified as dying, whereas in fact they survived. Gini index and cross entropy or deviance are cal calculated according to these formulas. When we have just two classes, we can plot entropy, genie, and misclassification error against the proportion of class K observations in node M. As you can see, we have the largest values of genie, entropy, and misclassification error exactly at 0.5. This is not surprising. If our node has 50% of class 1 and 50% of class 2, this node basically does not give us any information in terms of prediction value. We want to minimize entropy, we want to minimize genie, we want to minimize misclassification error, and the best are obtained at values 1 or 0.
meaning that when our node is as pure as possible, all of the observations in that node belong only to one class. If we return back to our example and our region 1 in the Titanic data, the share of people who survived would be somewhere here, and hence we can clearly see what would be the misclassification error, what would be Gini index, what would be entropy level calculated for region 1. Now, why do we want to use Gini index or entropy index instead of misclassification error? Look at this hypothetical example. Suppose we have 800 observations, 400 of them belonging to class 1 and 400 belong to class 2. And assume our tree proposes a split. It proposes to split data such that node 1 would be 300 observations from class 1 and 100 observations from class 2. And in node 2, the opposite. 100 observations of class 1 and 300 observations in class 2. There is also an alternative split. It can split the data such that in node 1 there will be 200 observations of class 1 and 400 observations of class 2. And in node 2 there will be 200 observations of class 1 and none of the class 2. So if we calculate misclassification error, we will get that in node 1 and node 2 our misclassification error will be 0.25. So, a quarter of observations are misclassified. When we look at the alternative split, 33% will be misclassified in node 1, but 0 will be misclassified in node 2. However, when we estimate the overall misclassification error, we will get that overall misclassification error for the first split or the second split will be 0 0.25. Misclassification error, in this case, will not guide us to choose one or another. It will be indifferent between the two splits. However, if you look at Gini index, Gini index for the first split will give a 37.5% for node 1 and for node 2. But for alternative split, it will have 0 0.44 for, for the first node and 0 for node 2. Now, if we calculate the overall Gini index, the overall Gini index will be higher for the first split and much lower for the alternative split. Hence, if we are guided by Gini index, we will prefer the alternative split. And this is kind of makes sense. Look at this in this way. We trade off a bit of higher impurity in node 1 in comparison to the first split, but we gain so much purity in the second node. And using Gini index, we will be able to find uh, such kind of splits. So to summarize, it is exactly the shape of entropy and Gini index that allows us to find purer splitting rules, whereas misclassification error is quite linear and is less sensitive to changes in purity.